What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about wheels and the fitment and the, and also the tires. This is something that I get questioned a lot on what my wheel specs are, what my tire size, and so on. I'm not new to the fitment game. I've actually been doing this for a few years now. I can't really remember off the top of my head, but I did have an IS200, which was the car that I learned everything that I know with. So with that car, I played around with different kinds of um, specs, wheel specs, and then different type of tire sizes. So it was a learning curve for me that I had to go through. And yes, you can go based off what uh, you can find online on doing research, but trust me, just because one guy is running a certain size of wheels does not mean that you can run the same uh, size wheels or with specs and everything just like that other person can because they can post up their wheel specs and everything but you're not going to know all the work that it took to fit those uh that certain wheel and uh that's just something that i had to learn as i went and uh it's just kind of a test like a trial and error type of thing sometimes you can actually nail it and sometimes you kind of can't the wheel specs on this car in particular they're uh, the wheels in the back are 19 by 10 plus 40 and the fronts are 19 by 9 plus 35 but i'm actually running a 12 millimeter spacer so technically they're 19 by 9 plus 23. uh tire sizes 275 35 in the back and 235 35 in the front i had when i first got the wheels they were 275 35 in the back but the fronts were 245 40. now those ended up being a little bit too aggressive too meaty for the ride height that I had and I ended up pulling my fender just a little bit it's luckily they both pulled evenly so it's really not that noticeable but if you actually take a look at the car in person you'll be able to tell so I ended up going down two tire sizes one in the sidewall and then one in the width so that pretty much created more clearance and everything and now I don't even have to roll my fenders I don't have any uh, rubbing issues and the, the wheel is pretty flush and I'm pretty happy and honestly I feel like I can fit a 245 35 in there you can run different set of wheels different um, even more aggressive than, than I am but like I said it all depends on what you're willing to do and what you actually want to accomplish with the or if you want a certain look whether you want it for performance so I asked some of you guys on uh, Instagram and I think I made it, uh, I placed it on YouTube as well, but I don't think anybody's uh, said anything. But let me uh, go ahead and uh, double check YouTube first. All right, so nothing on YouTube. And um, I do have a few questions on uh, Instagram. So let's see here. All right, so the first question asked, based on your front wheel fitment, would you say it's possible to run a nine and a half inch wide? Yes, uh, pretty much I have a good amount of space to run with and when it comes to the wheel, the width and the offset, uh, those two things play, uh, play a factor. So I'm running a 9 plus 23 and if I wanted to run a 9.5, I would have to run a 9.5 plus 30. Um, or you can, I guess you can say 31, 29. So anything around that range will get you the same fitment that I have right now. You might even be able to run 10. It just depends on the offset. But nine and a half, I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable running it with certain offsets. But also another thing is, remember if you're getting a certain set of wheels, a wheel with a lower offset is gonna give you more in a, a aggressive Fit, uh, fitment whether it be a concave face or a lip so if you go let's say if you're comparing a 9 plus 20 versus a 9.5 plus 30 the wheel with a plus 20 is going to have more concave than a 9.5 wheel just because the offsets are more aggressive so they're pulling the face inward a lot more than what they would do with a higher offset so the next question is, what wheels do you have? I might have already said it at the beginning of the video, but I'm running BC Forge HBR5s. Rear tire size, I already answered it, it's 275.35. And last question is, if I want a flush look like yours, what is the widest wheel you think I can run? No 
crazy stretch or offset. So like I mentioned, pretty much my rear is maxed um, to my knowledge. I can run more aggressive wheels, but I'd have to run a smaller size tire. And that's one thing that I don't want to do. Right now I feel comfortable being able to put some weight in the back without any rubbing. Because obviously if I go with the wider tire, it's going to create rubbing. If I go with the lower offset wheel, it's going to push the wheel outwards and it's going to create more rubbing. So I'm pretty happy with the rear. I wouldn't change it. And the front, you guys already know, um, I'm kind of torn on using a 245-35 and or keeping a 235-35. The main reason why I made this, I wanted to make this video was because I was getting so many questions from one of you guys on Instagram and tire size can be confusing. It's like I mentioned, it's a total trial and error because a lot of tires do happen to run different. Like say you can have one brand versus another brand. They're both the same uh, sizes, but one, one of the tires is actually going to be a little bit wider or a little bit taller. It also depends on how the sidewalls are designed. So most of them are right. And there's only, so there's two tires that I know run either small or bigger. And one of those is the Nanking. Those typically tend to run a little bit thinner than or skinnier than all the other tires. I know Nanking was actually a popular tire to run a few years back because you were able to get the most stretch out of it. And the one that runs a little bit wider to my, uh, my knowledge, I've never actually tried it myself, but there's so much information, so much information on the, on the internet stating that they run up from like half to one size bigger. And those are the federal size, uh, federal brand tires. So keep in mind, if you're, let's say if you do want to get federals, I would probably run, if you want to run a 275, I would probably play it safe for the first time and go with the 265 because you'd rather have it be a little bit skinnier versus being a little bit wider because if I try to run a 285 I don't think it would actually uh, work for me so let me go let me show you guys what I'm talking about all right so you guys can see this is a 275 um, 275 35 and I have enough clearance here and I could try to run a 285, but I'm scared that it's actually gonna be rubbing here every time I hit a dip. And honestly, this is just as perfect as it gets in my opinion, when you're not running a stretch. So it has, it has like a, a baby stretch, but it's enough to create that clearance. So whenever the wheels go in, whenever you hit a bump, you know, they're not gonna be rubbing. So with this, if you want to run a wider wheel than a 10, you're gonna have to, let's say if you're trying to run a 10 and a half, you would probably have to run something like a plus 50, no, plus 45 to plus 50. And that's for you to get the, uh, the fitment um, and without having to stretch the tire. But if you do want to stretch the tire a little bit, I mean, you could probably go a little bit more aggressive with the uh, the offset, maybe do it like a 10 and a half plus 40, keep it the same offset. It'll push it out quarter of an inch outwards. And uh, you could probably get away with the 265 and you'll have, you'll have more of a stretch than this, than, a, um, two, uh, than the 275 on a 10 and a half. So for the front, you guys can be the judge whether this is something that you guys like. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. I know I'm still gonna be getting a lot and I understand that, that's fine. Like I'm here to help you guys. I went through the whole learning process as well, but just do some research, browse online. Don't be afraid to ask other people what their specs are and if they did anything crazy to make it fit. There's other people out there that are running way more aggressive specs than I am. And all it takes is a little bit of camber um, and you do have to ride low. One thing before the, uh, we end the video here, I do want to mention that springs, coilovers, and bags, your wheel fitment will depend on that as well. You can't, in just my honest opinion, you can run, let's say the H&R Super Sports are the lowering springs that go the lowest. If you try to run my wheel setup, 
you might be able to do it, but something tells me that you'll probably end up rubbing in the back because springs, obviously they're gonna rot softer than what coilovers are. Coilovers are actually on the stiffer side, so when you hit a dip, the wheel doesn't squat as much as it would with springs. That's one thing why, you know, I have no issues with this. Like at the beginning, I was getting a lot of questions if I was, if I was rubbing or not because of how tight the fitment was. And I wasn't, I was actually lower than this, but you guys know ever since I got the uh, JHP lip, I actually had to raise the car. And I just didn't want to do the front because then the back looked kind of funny. So I had to raise the rear to kind of even it out. It just kind of depend on how much weight I had back there, if it was going to go into rubber or not. But now it's a lot better. And um, I do have it cambered in the front. I ended up cambering it negative two degrees. And then before I actually did it, the camber was set at, ne at negative one. And uh, that brings me to my last point. So some people have been asking me about the camber and typically on all the cars, once you lower it, your back wheels start to camber slowly. And it depends on, so obviously the more you lower it, the more that the wheels are gonna go into camber in. The front ones don't do that, so that's why so a lot of the coilovers now, they have camber plates, so you can actually try to match the rear to the front. And uh, with springs, you're, you're not going to get that much camber because you're not going that low. So that's another thing to keep in mind, guys, if you're still trying to decide what you want to do. My recommendation is if you want to lower your car, but you really aren't feeling springs, just say, uh, keep saving. Wait till you get coilovers because honestly, it'll save you money in the long run which I'll end up making another video talking about this, some of the mistakes that I've done when it comes to modding a car. But I'm just gonna end the video here, guys. If I missed any points or questions, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I'll get to it in the uh, next video. But once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.